Hi, my name's Jason Patrick. I'm an electrical power engineer with 15 years of experience. In this video, I'm going to share the top 10 expert tips for voltage drop calculations. Why is voltage drop important? Voltage drop has a significant impact on minimum cable size. Accurate voltage drop calculations result in smaller cable sizes every time. Voltage drop needs to be calculated with accuracy. The standards provide limits for voltage drop. Incorrect voltage drop calculations cause equipment malfunction and damage. I recommend that you use a reputable cable sizing calculator. You apply these expert engineering tips. And as a result, you'll save lots of money on your cables for your business. This presentation is for you if you are calculating voltage drop for electrical projects, installing long cable runs or heavily loaded cables, dealing with power factor problems, dealing with unbalanced three-phase loads, installing cables for motor circuits, involved in solar projects, working with flexible power cables, installing critical cables to survive fires. Tip number one. Use an accurate formula for voltage drop calculations. The standards provide simple equations, which are fast and easy to use, but they always result in larger cable sizes. Therefore, you should use an accurate voltage drop equation. Here's an example on the screen. An accurate voltage drop equation includes re cable resistance at cable operating temperature and cable reactants. It also uses the actual load power factor. Tip number two, for long cable runs to small loads, the cable size is dictated by voltage drop. Tip number three, poor power factor. Here are some images of some equipment which may result in poor power factor. The voltage drop for large cables especially increases significantly due to poor power factor. This is because large cables have a higher reactance than resistance. Here is an example calculation showing the effects of power factor on voltage drop. You can pause the video at this stage to go through the example, but ultimately you'll see that a small change in power factor significantly increases the cable size and the costs for the installation. Tip number four, heavily loaded cables. Hotter running cables have a higher voltage drop. The hotter the cable is running, the higher the resistance and hence the voltage drop. Remember that resistance goes up with temperature. It's very important to consider the temperature dependence of resistance in your voltage drop calculations. Tip number five, unbalanced three-phase circuits. Unbalanced three-phase circuits produce higher voltage drops. If your out of balance conditions are intermittent, you can assume balanced three phase conditions and use the heaviest loaded phase current for your voltage drop calculation. Otherwise, if your out of balance conditions are consistent, you should perform voltage drop calculations on a single phase basis by summing the voltage drop in the heaviest loaded phase and the neutral. Tip number six. Multi-core cables have a lower voltage drop than single-core cables. This is especially true for large cable sizes where single-core cables will always have a higher voltage drop than multi-core cables because of their higher reactance values. Remember though that for the same conductor size, multi-core cables will have a lower current-current capacity than single-core cables. Tip number seven, voltage drop for motors. During starting, the terminal voltage at a motor should be greater than 80% of its rated voltage. Otherwise, the motor will fail to start. For voltage drop calculations, you should use the full load current of the motor. And this can be obtained from the manufacturer nameplate or the manufacturer data sheet. For direct online motors subject to frequent starting and stopping, you should use a multiplying factor of 1.4 times the full load current for your voltage drop calculations. Here is an example of a voltage drop calculation for six motor circuits. You can pause the video here to go through the details, but essentially for cables four, five, and six, the cable size is being dictated by the voltage drop. Tip number eight, voltage rise calculations. Voltage rise calculations are exactly the same as voltage drop calculations. They are calculated in exactly the same way. 
For solar applications, there is a voltage rise limit from the inverter to connection point. There is a link on this page where you can view those limits according to the standards. Tip number nine, voltage drop for flexible cables. Generally, the voltage drop for flexible cables is higher than non-flexible cables. This is because flexible cables have a higher number of conductor strengths, which leads to a higher resistance. However, for very large cable sizes, the voltage drop in a flexible cable may be up to 10% lower than a non-flexible cable. The point is, is that you should obtain accurate resistance values from the manufacturer for flexible cables. Otherwise, you should use software that utilizes these accurate resistance values. Tip number 10, voltage drop in fire conditions. Critical power and control circuits need to survive fire for a certain amount of time. It's possible to calculate the voltage drop of cables in, in a fire by assuming the cable temperature. Typically, this is a very high number, for example, 842 degrees, and the length of the cable that's affected by the fire. Under fire conditions, the resistance of the cable will increase, which dramatically increases the voltage drop. In the absence of detailed calculations, you should increase the conductor size by two sizes for fire. Thank you for watching. Please visit elect.com for resources such as a free accurate voltage drop calculator. Also, feel free to send me your questions.